Hi, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of my server room. I've talked about it a couple times in my other videos, and yes, I do have a server room in my basement. So this is where all my servers are for you know, data storage, and VMs, and that kind of stuff. I've got a firewall up there, got a little network set up. It's nothing that impressive, but I figured that I would just give you a quick tour. So it's been kind of slow lately in terms of videos. Like I've been meaning to make more videos, but I just don't really have any projects going on and stuff like that. So I decided I'm just going to try to make some miscellaneous videos like this once in a while. And I've also been working on a programming project which is kind of boring to vlog so I'm mean, I mean, not, not really going to vlog programming because it's just kind of boring. So whenever I think of something to make a video of I'll kind of make one. I've been wanting to get more into it right so it's been kind of depressing winter like it just doesn't want to end. Like the footage that I showed at the beginning of the video that's literally like today like it's not old footage. And then we think spring is here and then winter comes back. It's like that every year this time of year, but it just gets old really fast. Yeah, so let's get to the server room. Okay, so here we are in the server room. Now it's kind of loud in here, so hopefully the mic picks this up. I actually got the mic facing towards me. So that should work out okay, I think. I'll only find out once I'm editing. So anyway, so I'm gonna start with this row here. So now this camera lens isn't really wide enough, so it's kind of hard to show the whole room. So um, basically I got like, three bays here so I got the first bay and then the second bay and third one and then this one's not really a bay it's a filing cabinet and a, basically a blank panel so like any controls or anything I want to add here like I can kind of just add it as I need so right now what I got going on here is it's got a battery backup system and I got it split into two battery banks. They're all in parallel, like everything is in parallel at this point, but I just have it split in two. That way I can disconnect one to do maintenance without affecting the other. So if the power happens to go out while I'm doing battery maintenance, then I don't have to worry. Because right now the way it is, I kind of have to disconnect the batteries just to do maintenance. It's kind of a pain. I eventually want to upgrade all this to a 48 volt dual conversion system and have the batteries in some kind of box on the ground where I can do maintenance without actually disconnecting them. So yeah, that's all this panel is for. Eventually I want to do like some home automation stuff and then I'll put the automation panel right here. So this is where the batteries are. So let me zoom out here again. So this is where the batteries are. The original intent with this rack was to put four batteries per shelf but I'm kind of limited by the size of the containers I can buy. I got quoted for some custom plastic containers and it was expensive. It would have been like almost a grand to get five containers, actually four, because that shelf is a bit smaller, so I wouldn't be using it. It's kind of storage. So yeah, so I got some random stuff here, gloves, which I never bother putting on, which I should when I'm doing battery maintenance, some other tools there. But these two shelves would be for batteries and I just never expanded. So I got two batteries here and then two batteries there, four total. So these are uh, basic lead acid batteries, marine slash RV batteries. Gives me a little bit under 400 amp hours of battery life and roughly four hours, but it's been a while since I've had to actually test that. Like we haven't had any big power outages. So I have a feeling I probably wouldn't do four hours quite anymore. Cause I mean, they've kind of degraded over time. So yeah, so that one's newer, and then these are older ones. The date's in there, 2013. 
I had some from 2012, but I think they died. I can't remember. So these are like just cheap batteries from Canadian Tire. So the failure mode tends to be shorted cells. They just randomly short out. And what ends up happening is instead of being a 12 volt battery, it te technically is a 10 volt battery, but it's being charged by the 12 volt system. So it just kills the whole battery. And well, even if it didn't kill it, it just wouldn't be useful. So yeah, so that's the battery rack. Now, because of the way they're in there, I thought I was smart when I first designed this and figured, you know what? It'll be nice and compact and vertical and efficient use of space. The problem is very hard to get in there. So when I want to do the battery maintenance, it's very tricky. The maintenance basically involves taking off these caps here, and then I just have to add water to them. That's basically what the maintenance is. And I also have to use a high hydrometer, I believe it's called, or hygrometer. I always get those terms mixed up. But it's basically a device. I won't touch it too much because there might be acid on there, but basically it tells me if the cells are healthy or not. I mean, basically, like it, it tells me the charge. So the charge should always be good because they're usually being floated. So if the charge is not good, then I know there's probably something wrong with the cell. Like when I had one that was shorted out, it was basically like super bad. Like it was like completely discharged because it shorted, right? So like I was getting zero volts out of it. That's not good. And this is the water container I use to store the um, distilled water. Because you have to use distilled water when you're doing batteries. You can't just put regular tap water. And I even want to experiment when making my own distilled water. Because believe it or not, I get go through quite a lot. Like last maintenance, I went through almost this whole container for two batteries. Basically what's here is what is left. Well, I guess it was not quite the whole container, but you know, it was quite a lot. And once in a while, I like to kind of touch the batteries. They shouldn't be heating up. If they're heating up, there's a problem. But yeah, anyway, so this is it for the batteries. And then this rack over here, there's actually not much in here. I got some UPSs here, which are separate from those batteries. They're not connected. A monitor that's just randomly thrown there. Keyboard. If I need to connect to a server, I'll just kind of drag that out. It's kind of a pain. I want to get like a KVM switch or a KVM console. But they're freaking expensive, so I just never got around to... I'm gonna have to try to build one sometime or something. These are switches I got for free, which I just... To be honest, I don't really use them. Like, I would have to set these up when, one of these days, maybe get more gear and set up a little lab. There's just random cable stuff, random router, which I don't use anymore. PDU, which is... I can't remember, but I think it's on the UPS. And then that box behind there, it's kind of hard to tell. But that is the big UPS, that is the inverter. It's an inverter charger. You can look at those big beefy cables going back there. So this is the inverter charger. This is what powers pretty much all the important stuff. Basically the point at this rack is to probably put power equipment at some point. I want to do some rectifiers and inverters and do kind of like a 48 volt dual conversion system. And this is the main rack. So this is where the actual servers are. So I'm gonna start at the top. So right here, that's just some home automation stuff. It's a little bit ugly. A lot of stuff is hard coded and hard wired. And it goes up to these Arduino. There's one board that's like an Arduino. Sorry, you might lose my sound here because I'm pointing the camera up and the mic is not pointing towards me anymore. Yeah, so this is basically like a Arduino one and relay controller board. And it's all connected to this stuff. And then it's connected to this server here which I named HAL 9000, which is kind of, which is kind of fitting for what it's doing because it's home automation stuff. Thankfully, I don't have it controlling any hash doors and my name's not Dave, so I should be okay. It won't let me out. And then the server just above HAL 9000, that's the firewall. It's writing a PF sense. And then I got two network interface cards and it's just, it's basically, basically acting as a firewall and it does the inter-VLAN routing. And back there, I got some switches. Uh, two of them are active, and then one of them I actually want to use as like an iSCSI slash SAN switch. But the fan is really loud, so I unplugged it for now. But whenever comes a time to set it up, I'm just going to put a different fan in it. And then this is a server that was actually decommissioned a while back. This is actually my oldest server. 
The install date of the operating system for this server is 2008. So it's about 10 years old. And it, I mean, it still works. Like everything in it still works. It's running Fedora Core 9, which is very old. But I mean, it did everything I needed to. And then what ended up happening is, actually a bit of history on the server. When I lived with my parents, I built that server. And it was just in a regular tower box. It was sitting in the basement. It didn't have quite that many drives, but it had... Actually, you know what? I'm trying to remember. I think at one point I did add all those drives. Actually, sorry, those drive bays. I think I only had like three drives in the RAID 5. And I kind of grew from there. And then at one point, this was pretty full of drives. Which got migrated to this server here. Which I'll talk about in a bit. So basically, I started migrating stuff off the server maybe about a year ago. To this server, which is the VM server. And the VMs were stored on, on this server. So the only thing that was left over was the mail. Mail is just such a pain but to set up that I just I was just getting lazy and I just never did it. Well well finally about a month ago maybe I decided to just virtualize this whole box. So I actually still have the Fedora Core 9 OS running and everything, but it's in a VM now. So this server is actually off. It's still a decent box, it's like a core 2 quad. And I mean, it has VTD technology, which would allow for virtualization. So it's kind of cool that I can still use it as like a lab server or something, or if I want to test something. So it's just going to stay there for now. Now, this is the VM server. If I recall, I think it's the last server I built. It's It's been a while now since I've built any servers. I kind of have everything the way I like it. So this is running uh, Xeon. I don't remember the exact chip or how... I think there's 32 megs of RAM in it. It's basically a Xeon base server made by Supermicro. So I basically got the bare bones kit and then I just put it together and that was it. Nothing too fancy, but it's a decent box. None of those drives are populated except I think the OS drive. Or actually, no, not even. I think I have like a solid state in there or something. It's been a while. So the actual storage is here. So this is running NFS. Well, it's running Linux. Yeah, all this stuff is running Linux, by the way. None of this Windows shenanigans, it's all Linux. So, so yeah, so this is running Linux, and it's running MD RAID. And then it runs NFS, which serves this server. And it also just serves general file access for the rest of the network. This is what I want to change eventually. I want to treat this more as a SAN. So this will be like behind a separate network, and then I'll, only, I'll have separate NICs for every server that needs it. But for now, it's just part of the network, it's just a normal server. Now this server here is a mining rig. It's running, it's a mining Ethereum. I only have two GPUs, a two 1070s, nothing fancy. I don't remember the giga hash. I think it's like 60 mega hash or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But it's basically mining a little bit at a time. I've mined close to two Ethereum in about two years. So it's not exactly the most efficient or the most effective miner. But hey, it's doing something. I kind of got into the game late. I regret not getting to Bitcoin in the early days, but that is life. And these two are actually my workstations. So one of them is running Windows for gaming and stuff, and then the other one's running Linux, which is my daily driver. Now we're so in terms of servers, that's pretty much it. Like I don't have a lot of servers. This room is completely overkill for the amount of servers I have. I mean like that home automation box I could easily replace with a Raspberry Pi and I actually plan on doing that. That firewall I might even convert to, I might even replace with a um, like some kind of small form factor kind of box. And then eventually I just want to have like two VM servers and one storage. And then well obviously the workstation and all that would stay, but you know like there's some downsizing I can do here. And then the way this rack is designed is it's just for cable management. I built all this because cable management systems are very expensive. So it's just easier and better to build it myself. This is just like a four post rack and I basically built around it. So you can kind of see the lumber behind there and all that. And then I also have some ABS pipes, which run right, I guess you can't really see that because of the bars, but yeah, so this runs right in the back. So if I want to run wires across, I can. So let's get in behind. So I started insulating the basement a while back, so eventually I'll drywall all this. 
Now the cable management isn't that great, but that's the patch panel that goes to all the jacks throughout the house. And then the switches. But yeah, this isn't the best cable management. And I actually fixed it a while back, believe it or not. But I just didn't do a good job of it. And these cables go up to my office, which is basically for video, USB, and all that stuff for the workstations. It's kind of nice having the workstations down here and not in the computer room. And the reason for that is less noise, less heat, less dust. This is a big mess down here too. Audio box here that does the audio for two PCs going straight upstairs. That's the back of the mining rig. The rig was custom built, mostly plywood and stock lumber and stuff like that. Right mount cases are so expensive, it's hard to justify buying them when you can just build them. Unfortunately, wood is flammable, so it's kind of a concern, but honestly, I'm not that worried. I mean, I got all this wood here and some people would freak out saying, oh no, that's flammable. Well, when's the last time a computer caught on fire? I mean, it happens, but it's very rare. And even if it did, the fire would kind of just like be contained. Like, ever tried to light a piece of wood on fire with like a lighter? Like, it's, it's not that easy. Anyway, so this is a PDU. Cable management isn't the best, but it's... You know, it's it's okay, it works. And this is how much power I'm drawing. So three amps off the inverter and five amps off the UPS. Obviously the UPS is just there to take care of little power bumps while the inverter is there for a longer term. And then up here I have an interesting box. This is a flight aware light feeder and what it does is I have an antenna in my attic and it captures flight data from airlines and it actually submits it to FlightAware so that's kind of cool I just did that for fun it didn't cost me anything and then this is just the back of all the other racks there's nothing really to show back there I can probably show you my horrible DC wiring so this is a DC cabling that goes out to the front panel. And yeah, it's it's kind of ugly. I want to redo all this one of these days. There's two fuses there. Yeah, so this is it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my server room. I'll probably do some more videos on projects in here as I go along. At some point, I might even redo some of this stuff. One thing I didn't account for is the acoustics when I built this place. A lot of the structural stuff or the rack is actually like fastened to the ceiling, which is fine. It was originally meant that way. The problem is that the vibrations actually resonate throughout the house. So like if I have a server with a fan that's really loud, it'll kind of resonate. And I don't know if you can actually hear that on the mic, but there is one that kind of whines a bit. It goes like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's kind of annoying and that kind of resonates. So I think it's one of the switches doing that. So eventually I need to kind of figure out that problem. When I shut down uh, this server here, this was my loudest server. And then when I shut it down, there's like different noises now. It's, it's funny, like the acoustics just completely changed in my house. So eventually I do want to insulate this place and all that and try to soundproof it better. And this is a panel as well that feeds pretty much everything in the basement. So like any new circuits I want to add to the house, I'm just feeding it from here. Because my other panel is like completely full. Eventually I'm going to change it out. I'll make a video in itself. So yeah, so this is it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye.